Hello guys, welcome to third video of stopwatch app series. In this video, we will be coding in Java using Android Studio in order to give stopwatch functionality to our design. So let's get started. As you can see on my screen that I have opened stopwatch app in Android Studio. Let's see what we have designed in a previous video. So go to app, go to resources, layout and open activity main xml file and you can see that this is the layout that we have designed in a previous video now we have to give the functionality to these buttons and we have to do it in the java so minimize this and go to java and open this main activity now here we have to create some variables so let's create private chronometer chronometer now private boolean running third one is private long pause offset now we have created the variables second thing we have to do is to connect the chronometer with the java code by using find view by id or uh, let's say chronometer is equal to find view by id r dot id dot chronometer so the third thing we have to do is to create on click listener so let's write public void and let's start with the start chronometer so start chronometer let's give it a view and let's close these brackets now we have to copy this and paste it three times let's change this one to pause and the third one to reset now when i hover over these it says that method is never used to use these methods we have to go to resources layout and activity xml file and here we have to give on click listener to each card view so let's give it for the first one which is a pause button so let's write on click and here we will select pause chronometer now for the second one which is the start button let's give it a on click start chronometer and for the third one reset chronometer now let's go back to main activity and here you can see that now these are used now we have to use if statement inside the start chronometer so write if if chronometer is running chronometer dot set base system clock dot ellipse real time minus pause offset now let's write chronometer dot start and also running which is true now we are done with the start chronometer now we have to go to pause now here we have to do the same so if running now as you can see that here it is not running so if time is not running it will start chronometer when we click on the start button but if the time is running and we click on the pause button it will stop the chronometer so here we will write chronometer dot stop and pause offset is equal to system clock dot ellipse real time minus chronometer dot get base and also use running is equal to false now reset chronometer for reset chronometer we will be using chronometer dot set base system clock dot ellipse time 
and the second one will be pause offset is equal to zero. Now, as you can see that we use paused offset is equal to zero. It means that when we reset it, means click on the reset button, it will start from zero. Now here you can see that we minus the pause offset from the system clock dot ellipse real time because we don't want it to start from zero. We want it where we stopped it. And same for the start chronometer. So that's it. We have completed our code. Now let's run our application and see if it's working. Now let's open our stopwatch app. This is the interference. Now let's play the stopwatch. Let's pause it. Now you can see it is stopped and when we reset it, it will goes to zero. If we play it, and reset it, it will start from zero. We have completed our stopwatch app. In next video, I will provide source code for this app. And if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.